How's it going guys? In this video I want to talk about the fitness industry and specifically I want to talk about the extremist attitude, the cult-like attitude, um, the dogmatic attitude that we see so often in really all areas of the fitness industry. Um, and I'll use the kettlebell swing as an example later on in the video, but essentially what we see so often in this industry is a very uh, cult-like attitude and you know an attitude that says there's a right way to do something and a wrong way to do something. That you know something is either really good or it's really bad. There's very rarely a middle ground. So for example, we so often see things like you know carbohydrates. They're either good for you or they're bad for you. Um, cardio. It's either good for you or it's bad for you. Kettlebell swings. There's either a right way to do it or a wrong way to do it. There's very rarely uh, much leeway or middle ground in those in those discussions and. What I want to bring to light is that that middle ground is really important and that more often than not, there's usually not a, a completely right or a completely wrong way to do something. Usually there's something in between that's going to be uh, most beneficial. And taking that one step further, um, it really does always depend on the individual. You know, the right way to do something totally depends on the person, their needs, their goals, their preferences. Um, their history, you know, are they in pain? There's so many different factors that come into play that just to say that there's a right way or a wrong way is very short-sighted. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, these extremist attitudes, that's really what sells, you know, this, you know, extreme right or wrong, good or bad, that's what gets people to buy into products, to buy into uh, certifications and all those things of the sort. The, that extremist attitude is very appealing to people. People don't like that gray area. They want to know what's right and what's wrong, so they can sort of just eliminate everything else and just focus on what they believe to be right. And so in this video, what I want to talk about is, uh, I want to discuss the kettlebell swing first and foremost, but really just to help you extrapolate and to understand that there's really never really a completely right and a completely wrong way to do something. So speaking about the kettlebell swing specifically, you know, the kettlebell um, part of the industry is specifically very cult-like. You know, and this comes with all aspects, you know, whether you're talking about powerlifting, Olympic lifting, kettlebells, you know, body weight, whatever it is, every part of the industry is, has, you know, their own cults and extreme attitudes. Um, but I see so often in the kettlebell world, you know, there's a right way to do a swing and a wrong way to do a swing. There's a right way to snatch, a wrong way. And it gets very, very intense and the debates spark a lot of controversy. Um, and what I want to talk about is that there's really not one right way to swing. So, for example, generally speaking, what I've found is that in among the kettlebell community, the extremely hip dominant hip hinge pattern with minimal knee bend is regarded as the perfect, optimal, right way to swing. Uh, and while I agree that that has a lot of benefits and that in the right population, that very hip dominant pattern is you know probably ideal, there are absolutely circumstances where more of a knee dominant swing might be a little bit beneficial as well, or might even be more beneficial. Um, so just to give you an idea of what each one would look like, let me show you the hip dominant and then the knee dominant. The uh, hip dominant swing pattern that, what I, from what I see, tends to be most regarded as, as optimal or correct looks like this. So, as you can see, that was very hip dominant, there was very little knee bend, and my torso got very close to parallel with the floor. But if we take a more of a knee dominant approach, which is what I do with some of my clients, it looks more like this. And if you see and you look at the differences between the two, the knee dominant approach obviously has a little bit more knee bend, and my torso is actually a little bit more upright than during the hip dominant approach. And while a lot of people in the kettlebell community will look at that and say, that is absolutely 100% wrong, you should never do that, I would argue otherwise. Because, you know, for example, if I have a client who comes to me and says, listen, I have back pain, but I really want a kettlebell swing, if I make them do a hip dominant approach where their back is more close to parallel with the floor, that's going to be a lot more likely to exacerbate pain. And so if I could transfer them to more of a knee dominant approach where their back is, or their torso is more uh, perpendicular to the floor, that's going to be much safer. And for them, that's probably going to be a much better option than the more hip dominant approach. Similarly, in the fitness industry, you know, as I'm sure a lot of you remember, for a long time, the quads were completely 
regarded as you know overused and you should never train them because you know everything in our life works the quads so we really only need to focus on the hamstrings and the glutes and the posterior chain and what that actually led to was a lot of people completely neg neglecting the quads the quads and exacerbating a whole bunch of issues and problems because they only trained the posterior chain so a lot of times with you know even high level fitness industry professionals I'll have them do more of a, uh, of a knee dominant approach to the swing because it gets more quads involved and they're neglecting them in other areas of their program. So by getting more quads involved with the swing is actually going to be beneficial for them because they neglect them everywhere else. So what I really want just to bring a light with this video is that there's very rarely a right and a wrong or a good and a bad way to do things. There's really a, a major spectrum that we need, to, we need to analyze when doing program design or exercise prescription or nutrition guidelines, whatever it is, there's very rarely a completely right or a completely wrong way to do things. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of hate for this video, but I really want your opinion and I want to hear what you have to say about this. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Let's get a discussion started and really work together to get rid of this whole dogmatic cult-like mentality that there's a right and a wrong and really let's work towards, towards improving the individual component and really understanding that individualized guidelines along that really gray scale of, you know, really let's find what works best for you is what's most important. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below.